Piglet management is critically important to the survival rate of each litter. The most fragile time in a pig's life is from the day they are born until they are weaned at approximately day 21. As every great swine operation, the Texas Tech Swine Facility does the very best to manage and minimize the stress for these piglets at this stage. In this informational video, there will be some explanation on farrowing procedures and a walk through the farrowing period. This video is designed to inform and encourage correct farrowing and processing procedures. Before a sow gives birth to piglets, there must be a few things in order. First, accommodations must be made for the sow and her new young. Shown here is a farrowing pin, where this new mother will give birth to her litter. The farrowing pin must have access to water and feed for the sow, and a heat lamp for the piglets. There are a few reasons to why sows are housed in farrowing pins throughout the farrowing process. First and foremost, it allows the safety of the newborn piglets from being trampled by their mother. If farrowing takes place in a group pen, it allows protection from other sows, which may become aggressive towards the young. Also, in a group pen, sows would naturally compete for food. Feed intake is very important, as consumption must be regulated to optimize milk production. The sow shall be brought into the farrowing facility no later than 110 days of gestation. A sow can give birth to as many as 18 piglets. When piglets are born, it is essential that they get the sow's first milk, also known as colostrum, which usually lasts from 24 to 48 hours after parturition. Since piglets aren't born with any antibodies, their immune system is very weak. They get passive immunity, or antibodies, through the sow's colostrum. This colostrum is full of immunoglobulins, including IgA, IgG, and IgM, which are essentially the antibodies that are being passed on from the dam. These immunoglobulins are synthesized out of proteins, which is evident in this table, as it shows that a sow's colostrum has approximately three times the quantity of protein over the sow's milk. This table also shows that most of the constituents that make up colostrum are lower as a percentage basis than the sows. This is mainly due to the importance of passive immunity and that these piglets must be able to fight off infection and disease before they can utilize other constituents. Processing the litters is very important to the piglet's survival rate, the meat quality of the final product, and the profitability to the business. The usual processing of the litter happens from one to three days after the pigs are born. Processing is done when the piglets are young to minimize the stress to the animal. These processes include clipping the needle teeth, ear notching, castrating, docking the tails, and administering antibiotics and an iron supply. To start off the process, the handler can clip the piglet's needle teeth. This is important to the safety of the piglet and to its litter mates. These teeth, if left alone, can also compromise the mammary tissue on the sow. Irritating the tissues can possibly affect the willingness for the sow to allow suckling. This will result in lower average daily consumption and ultimately lower weaning weights. The next step is to ear notch the pig to identify it. This ear notch will be the corresponding number assigned earlier, corresponding with the litter number it came from. The importance of an identification system like this is to be able to track where each animal came from and identifying litter mates, its dam, or sire. However, another popular tagging system is tattooing. This is also a good system, but is not used by all operations. After completing the ear notching, we move to castrate the male pigs. The reason that most swan operations in the United States castrate the boars is to increase the quality of the meat at the time of harvesting. Boar taint is caused by the accumulation of two compounds, androstenone and scatol. After castration, the following step is to dock the tail. This is done by cutting the tail approximately one inch away from the base of the tail. The purpose of docking the tail is to discourage other litter or pin mates from chewing or biting on the tail. Cannibalism has been well documented with this species. Docking the tails is a very common practice in domesticated commercial swine. Thank you for watching this informative video. We hope that it helps to understand the farrowing process.